very much. There you go. Right, thank you all for being here, first and foremost. Thank everyone for attending our podcast session. Um, today, we have some very esteemed guests, um, well known on the publishing circuit as well. Um, I know of qu quite a few of you are aspiring artists, want to know a bit more about publishing, what to do, what's the do's and don'ts. And obviously, we're going to have a chance to um, intro everyone else. But let me just get to who our guests are first and foremost. We've got Minds on Fire Publishing. Um, so these guys are independent publishing troupe. And they've been publishing for quite some. They'll do all the intros. They'll let you know who they are. But um, let's just get introductions first. But I just want the young people to know who we're talking to. Okay, so we have Simon. Hi, yeah, I'm Simon Harris. I'm a director of uh, Minds on the Fire. Uh, we're an independent music publishing company. Uh, we've been going for nine years, although um, I've been a music publisher for about uh, ooh, over 20 years now. So uh, seasoned, I think you might, you might call me. Um, yeah, we started Minds on Fire about nine years ago. Um, and previously I, I worked at uh, Fabric and set up their music publishing company. And, and prior to that, I worked for uh, EMI Music Publishing. So I've, I've sort of come from corporate to, uh, to independent. That's, that's, that's my journey. So okay. far. We're gonna have a, have a correction. So we've got your arm, sorry. Um, and then next up, we've got Selena. Selena, want to enjoy yourself? You're gonna have to unmute. Hi. Um, yeah, I'm Selena. I'm the operations manager at Your Army. I've, I joined um, in January, so not, yeah, almost a year soon. Um, but yeah, so we deal with like the music promotion. So essentially we get your music heard. Um, prior to working at Your Army, I worked at PPL for almost five years. Um, and that was the company, hopefully you've all heard of PPL. Um, especially if you're in the industry because that's how you get paid um, so now I'm on the side of your army where we get your music played so that you can get paid that's my intro <laughs> next up we have James Pitt yeah um, so yeah I, I, I started your army um, so yeah we try and get uh, our artists played on radio and on TV and in the clubs um, so we promote the likes of Dave, Miss Banks, Sam Smith, Joy Crooks, um, Major Lager, Kalela, uh, Disclosure, Rally Ritchie, uh, Duke de Mont, London Grammar. So, so yeah, so we've got a really good wide uh, range of artists that we, that we promote and um, yeah, we're really um, you know, dedicated to get, make sure that they, they get their music played and, and, um, and we make a difference to their careers. That's, that's what we want to do. Um, coincidentally, I also run Minds on Fire with Simon. <laughs> right next up um no particular order who am i gonna choose i'm gonna go for ty aka h2no hello hello can you hear me yep we can hear you oh, okay cool um yeah so my name is tyrese uh my artist name is daryl h2no and um yeah i i've been making music and working with United Borders for about a year and a half now, almost two years. Um, yeah, don't really know what else to say, really. Yeah. Um, what's, what's your music style, sir? What type of music do you make? Who's your inspiration? Um, so my music style is um, it's unique, I would say, to the UK scene. So uh, it's more hip hop, rap slash singing. Um, and my inspirations are like it's it's a mixture between like Saw Baby, Trippy Red, and um, like people like Skepta. So yeah, just like alternative rock with a bit of rap and stuff. So yeah, great intro. All right, next up we're gonna have Joseph. Um, yeah, Pyru, let's have you up. Hi everyone. Um, my name is. Joseph, also known as Paro. What I do mainly is music production. So I make beats and also help artists record the beats, have a little input, tell them what, what sounds good, what doesn't sound good. And currently I'm also trying to 
grow within the route of like music um, engineering, sound engineering. And um, I've been working with United Borders um, for about two years and they've really helped me build up the brand of Pyro. And so currently the type of music that I do make varies from anything that I can probably understand musically. So it could branch from something such as R&B all the way to like UK drill. Um, I'm currently working on the cla- sort of on like the classical symphonic symphonic kind of sound. You know, working with strings. You know, like an orchestra, etc. And I feel like I'm trying to incorporate that a lot within my sounds. If you hear some of my music, you'll probably notice that there's a lot of um, sounds that are inspired from like class from more of like the classical sounds. And um, yeah, that's just a bit of me. You know, um, hopefully I can try push my music out there. And hopefully you lot will one day hear um, more of my sound. But yeah, that's just me. Full intro, loving that. Right, next up we've got Icy, Icy. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I'm Icy. I'm an artist, but I'm eventually trying to get into like the business side and manage other artists as well and help them develop. I want to help young youths as well develop as artists as well. And um, yeah, I've been rapping for like five years now. I've been on United Borders for like nearly two years. And yeah, that's it. Just trying to develop. Have you had any um, successes? Have you performed anywhere, any special places? Oh yeah, I did the um, Spoken Word in Houses of Parliament. Did um, Bots Park in Wembley. Couple little venues, yeah. Couple of got a couple, yeah, I got, I got a couple of stuff on um, Link Up TV as well. I've got stuff already out there. I've done like my own kind of marketing stuff and put stuff on billboards. But yeah, this year I'm just like sitting back, analyzing the whole music industry and just planning everything ahead. And then hopefully next year, drop more stuff. We've all done a gig. We've all done a gig at the House of Commons, haven't we? I mean, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've, all, we've all done gigs there. Yeah, we've all been to <laughs> one, one show. We've all just done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But well, 2020 is a good year to write off if you are, if you are there at all. So yeah, 2021. Look out for Icy. Next up, we've got Darnell, a.k.a. Blessed. So, hi, um, my name is Darnell. You know, uh, and my artist name is Blessed Els. Uh, well, I've been with United Borders for as long as H has been, which is Tyrese. Me, him, H, uh, me, him, Hadi, and two others. We joined United Borders because, imagine, it, it, was, a, it was a very... Um, coincidental like thing but we didn't meet Justin until like a month or two in but I can tell you from now ever since we met Justin like things have gone in a direction we couldn't have like you know, imagined in a way as in like him and the whole United Boys team they facilitated us as artists and they helped us grow not just with like us like our creativity but also with our business side of things and he let us take care of things on our own uh but other than that he made sure like in our own time we made sure as well that we just developed like with with each other and helped each other like for example Tyrese he would help me mix my vocals and we also saw each other's promotion out and stuff like that but yeah that's pretty much what we just be working all the time so yeah. Awesome. Well done. Love that intro. And I don't know if Hadi's mic's working. Hadi's your mic working? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Let's see. Well, Hadi's more from the fashion side of things. So all of um we've got YTI, who comprises of Blessed, um, H2 No, um, Shay as well. And Hadi is like the fourth unsung member. So he's there like their muse, and also he's a fashionista, he creates all their fashion. So he's got his own fashion line. But Hadi can introduce yeah. myself. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, my name's Hadi. Um, I'm into, like, clothing. I've got my own clothing line. I've been running it for, like, the whole idea. Like, it's been, like, two years, I'd say now. But the actual making of everything and putting work out there, it's been, like, a year and a half. But, um, yeah, like, other than that, we, when we joined United Borders, it just helped us a lot. Just, like, mostly what Donald said. It just helped us a lot, like, grow and just come in with each other more and just become stronger and just like working more and just working on my clothing and the music as well and just putting work out there so yeah more other than that i'm just trying to go work with united borders more often and then just see where i can go i guess 
yeah. Uh, so we know the relationship between fashion and music is a very, very close one. So, um, yeah, you're yeah. Right. right. So today's podcast really is, oh, sorry, myself. Uh, Justin, run a charity called, oh, we've got two more waiting. Oh, gosh. So one second, let me admit all. Right, so yeah, allow me to reintroduce myself. Hold on, let's see if these guys come in before. Let me, let me not rain on their parade, one second. Right, we've got JP on, ah, oh, look at you. Um, and we have Shay here as well, I think. Shay, can you hear me? Well, go on. Well, go on, wow, deep voice. All right, Barry White, AKA Shay, can we hear about you and what you do, please, champ? Um, well, right now, I'm working as a CSCS laborer. I'm passionate about music. My category is old school R&B and, you know, hip hop. Uh, I like basketball as well. I also like helping others. Um, I love doing spoken word and poetry as well. That's what I'm trying to get into because I feel like my words are like, when I write things like in poetry, like it's beautiful, isn't it? And then, um, what else? Yeah, I'm just an energetic person, isn't it? Yeah, Shay's had some 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 great so great. with a charity. He um was actually performing on stage. Was you was you with Goldie? A certain Goldie? Uh, yeah. Wanna wanna re yeah. reflect on that a bit? Um, yeah. So like, obviously, we met Goldie because we done um, some yoga, right? And then he gave us some t-shirts called, I think they're called Yoga. What's it called, Yoga Master? It's a Yoga Master. Yo, gang Yo Gangster. Yo Gangster, yeah. That's free that's plug-in, you're giving them free plug-in. Let's be careful, but yeah, you keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then obviously, from there, he just said, that, Yo, do you want to perform on stage? And then we came down, and we were like, yeah. We just performed on stage, it was so lit that like, everyone just started jumping. It was, it was, it's vibe, you know, it just makes you feel different in a way. Especially when um, you perform in, uh, what's it, in Wembley, Box Park. No, near the Box Park, no. That was nice as well, because Yoda, I found that Yoda's too dope still. You know? I think um, the um, Soul Circus is where we went to perform. So it's, you know, very much like yoga crew, spandex everywhere. You know how it is, cheese and wine. And um, these guys were kind of thinking, well, we're not sure how we fit into this because we're very obvious hip hop and we're not sure where this is going. But then Goldie took to the stage. Um, I know a few of the guys are all rappers and spitters. They was a bit worried about the BPMs. But then Goldie came, Goldie done what he done, had the crowd electric. And then these guys were like, no, we want to go on stage. That's it. Get us on there. Get us on there. So, yeah, they went up there and done a freestyle and absolutely tore the place down. So their session was the best session. And Goldie was pretty good, but these guys were great. Right, last up, I think we have London boy JP. Are you there? Yep, sorry, you're right. Sorry, I was playing with my people. Hello, you guys all right? I can't hear you. Is my connection drop? No, nah, you're here. We can hear you. Yeah. Oh, you see you guys all right? Mm -hmm. Hello, uh, good afternoon. I mean, good, yeah. You guys all right? Good, thanks. Good. Uh, how how's your how's your day been so far? Yeah, fair to middling, thanks. Yeah, uh, my name my name is uh, London Boy JP. I am a producer, and I like to make music. I also like to kind of joke around just to you know feel the atmosphere. <laughs> um, yeah, that's really it. That's really me. <laughs> I'm kind of shy, so I didn't really. I expect you guys to form me so quick. Um, yeah, I think he's been quite modest. Um, JP's come on quite some. He's what's 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 your music style? What would you say your music style is? What's your influence? Um, oh, sorry, my music style. Um, I would say is like trap music, mm -hmm. like in terms of uh, who can I give you an example of? Like you know AJ Tracy. Yeah, you guys, yeah, like that type of music or like American type of hip hop, urban type type music, but also like old school, like using old school samples and you know mixing it down and making it into urban music. Yeah, right. You're quite a big reggae lover as well. I take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love me a bit of Burris Hammond, you know, studio, 
Yeah, you know I'm saying. <laughs> I like this. You're, type you're, you're my age group now. Um, has your work been yeah. anywhere with any commercial entities? Has your work gone anywhere like that? Um, yeah. Um, well, I've got a lot on release music, but um, I have stuff on like uh, Tim Westwood TV, um, like GRM Daily, like all like the UK like stuff. Um, I got a song on uh, World Star Hip Hop in America, um, and yeah. But more time. Some of them are just on release, like they're gonna get released this year or like next year, yeah, like on tapes and stuff like that. And you had you created a, an advert for Sonos, um, your music scored to Sonos as an advert as well. That oh, yeah, of, sorry, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, um, within the charity, um, we did a uh, program, and, oh, yeah, um, so yeah, 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 we did a, a Sonos, yeah, where we had to create a um, like a piece for like the advert, so yeah, uh, me and my friend did that, um, me and Pyro. He's in here. Uh, we did. Uh, we made a beat for uh, YTI, who uh, performed on the BBC One show, which is a big, a big, big thing. You know, that's one of the biggest placements in in life. So you know what I'm saying? To perform on that on the BBC, no one, no one really gets that opportunity. So yeah. Right. So thank you very much for that, JP, and the rest of the gang. Thank you all very much. Um, great intros. Right, myself, I'm Justin Finlayson. I run a charity called United Borders. The whole setup for United Borders was originally to work with young people who don't have access to studios, provide, oh, look at this one, provide music education for free to people who are in communities that don't normally get um, studio access, and to also take them on a journey where we introduce them to different environments, different spaces where they can just perform and just be themselves, and take them on a journey so, you know, from the comfortable to the uncomfortable to making every space more, more their own. Um, we also aim to connect young people in different parts of the borough where, where I live, which is Brent, owing to a lot of like youth violence, you know, because people don't know any, anyone and things can escalate quickly when people don't know each other. So we do a lot of work in making sure that we select young people from different parts of the borough so people are working together and, you know, keeping the area more harmonious. So a lot of these young people, I've been working with them for over two years, yeah, two, three, some of them even four. But um, yeah, it's been a great journey. So whenever we get... Um, they're, they're all our ambassadors. They've been in the program that long. And, um, you know, they tend, they're at that point now where they're ready to either expose their work or be exposed to different opportunities, you know. So these guys are all great. They're all very consistent and um, reliable. They deserve any opportunities that we can, um, we can actually highlight for them. So with that, without much ado, we'd like to discover a little bit more about publishing. Why publishing? Um, is it important? In, a, in an era where people are going independent, do we still need publishers? Um, just learning more about that side of things, because a lot of our guys are none of, I don't think nobody's signed to a publishing deal yet, um, but they're curious and people want to know why it will benefit them as, as independent artists. Take it away. Um, <clears throat> so I guess we should, we should start by asking, you know, what, what, is, a, what is a music publisher? Um, and uh, what, do we, what do we do? Well, we, we look after the, the interests of the songwriter. So uh, whenever a songwriter uh, delivers a song, um, we protect and exploit the rights in that song. Um, and I suppose a, a good way of sort of illustrating what we do is to maybe sort of to go back before there were record companies, before there was recorded music, um, because music publishers have been around for over a hundred years. You know, music publishers were established before record companies, before people made records. And, and what music publishers did in those days was they would uh, print the print music for a, for a composer, and then they would disseminate that sheet music, that print music uh, to conductors, orchestras, music hall styles, uh, and those people would perform that song and they would sell that sheet music. So that's why music publishers are called music publishers because they originally uh, published the music. Fast forward to, to when uh, there were discs, there were recordings of music, uh, music publishers could then uh, demand a royalty on behalf of their composers uh, for the 
the sale of that disc, for the sale of that record. Fast forward again, a few more years, we've got streaming services, we've got public performance. So music publishers now connect their composers' rights to the royalties uh, derived from public performance, streaming, vinyl sales, CD sales, um, any anywhere where there's a, a you know a, 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 an exploitation of that song. So that is a sort of quite a um, a sort of history of music music publishing from um, you know sheet music days to where we are now, you know, the, the streaming. Um, what we also do as well is we, we find um, opportunities for the song. So we will um, maybe try and get that song covered by another artist. Um, we will try and get the music into adverts, games, um, TV shows, that, that sort of thing. That's another thing a publisher does. So, but essentially what we do is we, we, we look after the songwriter's rights. So, you know, that songwriter may or may not be the artist. So you might have um, a songwriter that writes for Little Mix. That songwriter's work still needs to be protected and monetized. Um, and that's, that's what we do. So we, we connect the song to the royalties. Um, and that's sort of in a, in a nutshell what a music publisher does. Yeah, as Simon said, you know, so when a, a, a track's played on radio, there's money for the songwriter and we collect it for you. When it's, when it's on YouTube, we collect it for you. When it's, you know, when it was played at a gig, we try and collect it. <laughs> so, so yeah, so that's, that's what we do. So we, we try and it's, 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 we try and make publishing a, a, an important income stream for the artists that we represent. Um, you know, a lot of artists make uh, their money from, from live gigs. They, you know, they make some money from recorded music, depending on what kind of deal they sign with a record label. Um, so, so yeah, we try and maximize the, the, the money that they can get from their, their songs. Um, so yeah. And in answer to your question, is it relevant in today's industry? Yeah, of course, you know, it, everybody needs to make sure that they're, they're getting, um, rewarded for their hard work and their creativity so so yeah unless you've got someone representing you making sure that they're hungrily collecting all the income for you um you know you're not going to be rewarded for your creativity so so that's that that that's that's what a publisher um does and, and tries to achieve for the people they represent i'm not um i don't work for minds on fire i work for your army um but yeah like like they've explained it's a it's an important revenue stream and i think a lot of the time artists don't tend to and sometimes they miss out on understanding the purpose of having things like publishers having your ppl and your prs and it's important that you educate yourself and you understand as much as possible because there's so many different ways that you can actually make money and all of that really helps because you can put that back into your career you know into your your art so you can go and make more music and things um so the only thing i would just say is just make sure that you understand every aspect of it don't just rely on like think oh you have to have a manager to do it all because even if you do have a manager representing you you should fundamentally know what your manager's doing so don't always rely on somebody else to do it learn it for yourself and make sure you understand especially before signing any any deals too yeah we're we're um we're members of prs so uh, prs has as its members uh songwriters and and publishers so if you're a songwriter you can join prs if you're a publisher you can join prs and, and PRS stands for the Performing Rights Society. So they collect, they license and collect the royalties uh, derived from the public performance of a song. So they will have um, a licensing deals with the BBC for radio, for TV, Channel 4. Um, they will do licensing deals with, with Spotify and YouTube. Um, and the idea, the idea of a, uh, of publishers joining PRS is that we, we collectively license all our repertoire through the PRS. So the PRS has this 
huge sort of repertoire to license and it can go out and get the best deals possible. The PRS is that, you know, if you sign to a publisher, you've got a team of people there trying to add value to, to your song, whereas the PRS just collect what's already been done. Whereas a publisher actually try and add value and, and try and find other ways of, of getting income for your songs. Yeah, I just want to say that. So it's to say I'm an artist, for example, yeah, and you guys are a uh, publishing publishing company so I, basically if i have if i have a mixtape or an album or whatever you guys as the publishing publishing people i would come to you guys about it basically so is it that you guys will help fund my my um my my album or my mix wherever with like advertisement whatever and you guys will take back the money that you guys paid for me throughout the album sales and then take what percentage back is that how it works or yeah well, tradition sorry, no, sorry. So we, we, yeah, we're not, we're not, um, so we're very, we're separate to, to the, to the label. So, okay. um, we, d we don't act, we don't act as a label, but what we do, we know a lot of record labels. So <clears throat> if you came to us with, um, with a few, with a few track finished tracks, we could point you in the direction of a, of a record label. That's one of the things we do. We can creatively, we can get involved. We can say, right, we think this, this label will like this track and we know those people over there, we can connect you. You know, that's another, that's another thing we do. Another, another thing is we, if you're looking for uh, vocalists or, you know, lyricists or, or you know, singers, we, we, can, we can help connect you to, to, to those people as well. You know, that's a, an, another, another, another thing we do. Or you want to... Oh, yeah, I wanted to ask a question as well. Um, I was gonna say, do you not have any artists that are signed to like the publishing? Like, how does that work? Do artists get signed to you lot, or do you not just work with them temporarily on a project? The music industry is basically split into two rights holders: the record label and the publisher. So the record label look after the master, the record, uh, mm. the recording of the song, whereas we look after the song. So there's two. Mm. Sometimes it's called the intellectual rights because a, a song is in the air, you know. <laughs> uh, but they look after the recording of the song. So that's so that's generally how most artists get their money is they get from the sale of a, of a song or of a record sorry and then also the exploitation of the song on that record so we look after the song and the record company look after the master the recording of that song so that that's that's the two main income streams for an artist so if, if, if an artist is signed to a record label they also are usually signed to a publisher um so then they're they're making sure that all the money is coming to them you know you think you guys can like help us in terms of like getting what you guys are like talking about because some of us in here who don't really know how to like get certain situations because certain people don't know people how to get stuff so I'm just asking do you think you guys can help us in like any like, form of way yeah I mean that's I, I mean I'm that's, that as well yeah I mean and that, that's that that's right. I mean that's I think another thing that Justin wanted to get on to is how how do you get into the industry how do you how do you start up how do you get noticed how do you how do you start that process? Um, and, and yeah, that, that's, that's a, a problem everybody has, you know, when they're starting out. Um, and and the, answer, the, the answer to that question is, you know, yeah, it's finding people that, that believe in what you're doing. Like you've already got one of them there, which is fantastic, you know. And so, so it's about finding other people that believe. Now, that might be somebody at a publishing company, it might be somebody at a record label, it might be a manager, it might be a lawyer, you know, all these people if they if they're on your side and believe in what you can do is they're, they're gonna they're gonna try and, and make things work for you um how do you make that happen that's a more complicated <laughs> um uh question you know because it can happen in so many different ways um obviously writing good music starts you know that's 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 the start off point um and then and then once you're starting to do that once you've got enough things recorded then it's about getting them heard you know how do you hear music you know it's yeah do you hear it on on Jiren daily do you hear it? where do you hear your music and that's usually the answer try and get it in those channels that you listen to music from you know how you know you know that that's how you do it and then people like us can then say right okay well we we know those people or we don't but actually we know somebody who does you know so so yeah it's about it's about working out where you want your music heard and then finding people that can actually help you achieve that um, fundamentally, I think the most important thing is make sure your music is good, okay, and just concentrate. So, so don't always think, oh, I need people to help me, like who's going to help me? This industry is tough 
And if you really want to be successful, you've got to have the actual product. That's where you've got to start. So just make sure that you've got a good quality um, catalogue of songs. Um, and then also alongside making your music, build your network. Like what James said, make sure that you're finding the right people that can help you, but don't rely on anybody. That's my opinion. I think you really need to make sure that you can do as much as yourself as possible. If you're making good music, trust me, people are gonna start coming to you and then the doors will open. But yeah, but yeah, yeah, for sure. Practically, in answer to your question, a company like mine, your army, who you know, we do the radio for Dave and, and Restory too and all those kind of people, then you know, if you have made a really good record and you send it to me, I'll listen to it, right? And if I think it, it can get on radio, I'll get it on radio for you. You know, it's as simple as that in some cases, you know, um, we listen to everything almost that comes through to us. Mm -hmm. um, now, obviously I'll listen to it quicker if it's sent by somebody that I know that I've worked with previously, right? So, you know, if it's a manager I've worked with previously, you know, Zeon sends it to me, who's Ratchet's manager, we're gonna listen to it pretty quickly, right? But even you as a, if you just find our email address or a new email us and it's a good song, we'll get straight back to you almost well within a couple of days we'll get you know because we we want to represent the best music it's, it's in our interest to represent the best music out there right so yeah. if we're going to radio one and saying right here's the new here's the new dave record but also by the way there's this new kid that we've heard that's absolutely amazing listen to that at the same time as you listen to the new dave record um you're going to get it heard right so and, and and if it's good enough and they go yeah it's good enough they'll play it and then you start your career that's one way of starting a career through through radio, through traditional media, as we call it, radio or TV or press, you know, so there's press agencies and there's, you know, another way of doing it is putting up, making sure you find maybe a good distributor, right? So uh, somebody that can actually help you get it up on DSPs, uh, sorry, Spotify and Apple and places like that. And sometimes Spotify will put it in their new, you know, hip hop um, editorial playlist and then you can get your record heard there. Um, you know, obviously doing gigs as you've been doing, trying to get out there and get on the right, right lineups. That's another way of getting your music heard, another way that people will notice you, another way that maybe somebody in the industry will hear you. So there's loads of, you know, doing a good video that you put up onto YouTube, you know, um, put a little bit of digital spend behind it, a little bit of marketing spend behind it, get it out to lots of people. There's loads of different ways you can do it. I guess it depends on the music, the kind of music you're making. And then you go, right, where does that fit? Who's the best person to get it in those channels, you know? I was going to ask, you see with distribution now, like distributing it to like streaming platforms. So mm -hmm. do I have to figure it out myself, like find my own distributor or do you lot have your own distributors that you work with? We can definitely recommend distributors that would, you know, again, depending on the style of music you're making, we can recommend distributors that work within those, 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 you know, there's, there's a couple that, there are a couple that work genre specific. Mm. Um, like I'm already, I'm already using DistroKid. So like, that's one example, yeah. but I yeah, think there's exactly. better ones out there. There's better ones out there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, they're all, as with all companies in the music industry, they're good at some things and not so good at others. You know, as every single, you know, company in, in, from the biggest to the smallest are good at some things, not very good at others. So, so yeah, it's about finding the right fit for you and your music at the right time of your career. Um, mm. And yeah, you know, that they're, they're, you know, a distributor, I wouldn't say that they're the most proactive people that you'd find on your team. You know, they're just uploading onto, you know, they're just uploading your music and hoping for the best in the main. They're not, they're, mm. you know, there's, there's not a lot of them that are going to spend the time with you and go, right, what are you trying to achieve here? What are you, you know, the, mm. they, it's a numbers game for them, right? So, so either you need a manager who can then navigate that or you, you then, or you need to, you know, uh, maybe get to know the editors. You know, the, there's some editors at Spotify that, 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 that generally do hip hop, they do you know, whatever kind of, you know, there's lots of very important, you know, so, find out who the editors are, you know, yourself, you know, and, and get to know them, you know, that's, that's what we, even that's what we have to do as a company, even, you know, we, we still have to get to know people that maybe suddenly get a job somewhere. We, oh, how do we get to know them? You know, and you have to just try and get to know them, send them good music helps. You know? uh, all of us in this chat, like me, I see just YTI as a group and Pyro and JP, all of us are like, I can tell from working with everybody and getting to know everybody, everyone's like family to me. Uh, we're all, I would say, ambitious and very driven people. And like Selena was saying um, about how, you know, you don't really ask for handouts. Like, from experience, I can tell that none of us are like that because we've done, everything's been in-house with us. We've never asked anybody for anything. People have come up to us and said things to us and 
tried to give us opportunities, but then again, they come, they become false promises. Mm-hmm. Another thing as well, um, what I was saying is, uh, see how you guys are publishers, right? So say we've done our research and we know what we're going for. Then again, there's always more to learn. You feel me? So like, imagine because our sound is more, you know, and we, we see from here, obviously here and now, I see things in the UK, like things are starting to pop off more. Like there's only, there's only like elevation, you feel me? But it's always been, people always, always looked to the US, you know, they always like, in a way looked up to the US and been inspired by the US because that's where it just seems like there's more happening over there. You, if you get what I'm saying. So imagine we wanted to get our sound over there if, like, uh, would a publisher be able to help us with that? Yes, in, in as much as you know, um, that you know, a publisher would try and find the right team. If 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 let, let's say you signed to a publisher before you signed to a record label, before you signed to a manager, then you know you'd hope that your publisher would then try and find the right team, the right record label in America, yeah. or the right you know the right manager in America that could help you out. You know, you know, it's, 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 you know, if breaking a market like that isn't easy. <laughs> so, you know, you'd need to have some pretty, pretty, a pretty good team to break that market and some good songs, you know? Um, so yeah, so yeah, whatever, you, you know, whoever you find first as, as, a, as, as a trusted member of your team, whether it be a publisher, a label or a manager or, you know, a, a live agent, then yeah, they should try and help you achieve what you're trying to achieve, you know? Um, so, but you know, I, I think coming back to Selena's point, I, I think you know a lot of people in the industry, you know, they so you know if 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 I send as a publisher, I send an an act to a really high profile manager, a manager that can actually make a difference to an act, right? One of the first things that they'll say to me is, "Are they their own engine?" And by that they mean, are they writing all the time? Do they know what kind of artist they want to be? Are they creating content? Are they creating the right kind of videos? You know, are they doing the stuff themselves, really? Because, you know, an artist manager or a label can only amplify what the artist does. They can't create an artist. You know, you're the artist. So, so you, that's what a manager, a good manager, or a good label would say to me. If I'm sending, if I sign you as a publisher before anybody else signs you, then if I send it, I, I, I'd need to know that you have got, 30 songs that are amazing you know already ready to go you've created your own content you know what kind of style you want to be projecting you know what kind of you know what kind of things you're trying to say in your songs you know all that you know you you know having a unique voice you know is something of course that lots of people you know talk about as well you know have you got a unique voice are you saying something different or are you just you know talking about the same things about everybody else is talking about so if you are your own engine and and you get that by by at the start of your career, finding people that you can work with, that can create, that can do your beats, that can do your visuals, that can, you know, finding that team, you know, um, like, you know, like Stormzy did and all those other people have done, did they find a little team? They didn't need a label. They just needed the label just once they'd already done all that, you know, and then the label amplified that. 